Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about how we can create a spore gear model in SOLIDWORKS using just a bunch of equations and gear parameters that we have already defined for this model. This is actually a very efficient way for the sake of modeling and designing some, some standard mechanical components that their geometries are, are driven by some parameters and variables like shafts, like pulleys, like gears, etc. And the power of parametric modeling comes when we want to make some adjustments to the gear or we want to manipulate the size of this gear without having to going through all of these features and their dimensions and their values and their sketch related dimensions and so on by just changing these variables here. So for example, if I want to show you how it's done, I can just simply change the number of teeth variable from 45 to let's say for example 25 or let's just say 20 all right and then we can just see how the software effortlessly and automatically generates the updated gear gear model for us all right so in this video we're just going to do that but before we get into that let's just take a look at the basic gear geometry and its associated parameters so if you're working in the, in the metric system, we're just going to need to define the module in millimeters and we also need to determine the number of teeth for the gear and the pressure angle in degrees as well. So these are three independent variables from which other gear parameters are defined. And notice that ultimately we must be able to establish these three circles or their diameters and afterwards we need to come up with a tooth profile and then pattern that around this circle. Therefore, we need to define the diameter of these three basic circles. So for example, for the pitch diameter, we can say that it's equal to uh, the module times the number of teeth. And for the outside diameter, this is the outside circle, it's equal to the pitch diameter plus two times addendum. An addendum is basically the radial difference between the outside circle and the pitch circle. And for these standard gears, it's equal to the module. And for the root diameter, this is the root circle, it's equal to the pitch diameter minus 2 times the dandum. And the dandum for standard gears is equal to 1.25 times module. And similar to a dandum, it's, it's the radial difference between the pitch circle and the root circle. Alright, so we're just going to use these equations in SOLIDWORKS in order to construct these three circles. And then after that, we need to establish the tooth profile using gear theory and some fundamentals. All right, so I'll just create a new part. And the very first thing we need to do is to define equations. So I'll just do that by going to the hidden tree items and selecting equations. So under the global variables, I'll start defining our gear parameters. And let's start with the module. So for example, it's equal to 2 millimeters. And we have number of teeth of 30, for example. And we have pressure angle, 20, 20 degrees. All right, so these are three basic parameters that are the foundation of our preceding calculations and modeling. So we can say that addendum is equal to the module, and addendum is equal to module times 1.25 and as you remember, the pitch diameter is equal to the multiplication of number of teeth and the module. And we have outside diameter, and it's equal to the pitch diameter plus two times addendum. All right, and for the root diameter, we can say that it's equal to the pitch diameter minus two times it's equal to pitch diameter minus 2 times the dandum. All right, so now that we have defined our equations and parameters, we can just simply go ahead and create our three circles. So I'll just start a sketch on the front plane, and I'll start drawing three circles. And I'll give their dimensions by going to the uh, equations and I can do that by simply putting an equal sign here. And notice that I, I have access to our global variables that we have already defined, as well as uh, quite a bit of mathematical functions that might come in hand sometimes. So I can just say that global variables and 
I can select the, the, the root diameter. Okay, and for the pitch diameter, I can just simply say that it's equal to uh, 60 millimeters, right? And finally, for the outside circle, I can just do the same thing. Okay, so we're good to go. And from this point, we have two options to proceed our modeling. Option number one is to make an extrusion from, from the root circle. And then simply by extruding the tooth geometry from this surface, from this end, all the way through the object, we can just construct our gear. But what I'm going to do is another thing. I change this extrusion from, from the root circle to the outside circle. And the thing is, instead of creating the tooth profile, the tooth geometry, and then extruding that, I'll just cut the, the geometry between two adjacent teeth from this end to this end. And then pattern that around the circle, I can just uh, construct and finish our modeling. Okay. Alright, so I'll just create a sketch on this surface and then I'll draw a construction line which is going to be our reference vertical axis about which every sketch elements and entities are going to be symmetric. Alright, so let's make our circles visible. So from this point, I'll use the three-point arc for drawing the tooth profile. Alright, and I'll start drawing from the root circle to the outside circle. So this is one half of the tooth profile. And from now on, we will rely on just a bunch of gear fundamentals in order to construct the appropriate uh, gear uh, tooth profile. Alright, so the very first thing we need to consider is that this arc should be tangent to, to the line that exactly passes through the gear center. So I'll just start a construction line from here to the center and make a tangency relation between these two entities. And, and the next thing is to mirror these two entities about our reference axis. Okay, so, and then we need to define the pitch point or point of contact, which is on the pitch circle. Okay. And we already know that these two points should be on the same line, which is in this configuration, a vertical line. All right. And the next thing is to define the pressure angle for these two profiles. And the pressure angle is basically defined as the angle between the common normal of the two contacting machine gear and the line of velocity of the pitch point. So when we are talking about a common normal, we are implicitly saying that we have to deal with a common tangent first. So I'll start drawing an, another construction line, which is going to be tangent to this arc. And at the exact same time, it should pass through the pitch point. So this is our common tangent. And for the common normal, I'll just draw another line from the pitch point. And these two lines should be perpendicular. So this is our common normal and this is our common tangent. All right. And for the line of velocity, we already know that the line of velocity is definitely tangent to the pitch circle. All right. So I'll just say that the angle between these two lines should be equal to the pressure angle we have defined. So the last thing we need to do is to define the length of this line or to determine the distance between these two adjacent teeth, all right? And in order to do that, from, from gear theory again, we assume that the distance between two adjacent teeth is equal to the tooth thickness since we are assuming zero backlash and, and, and clearance. Although in real life applications, this assumption might be quite different since we're going to have a little bit of deviations and clearances due to manufacturing errors and stuff like that. Alright, so let's just do that by creating another construction line from the center to the outside circle. And this line should, should represent the half of the tooth thickness, right? Half of this tooth. Right, so I'll just need to define its angle with respect to this uh, vertical axis line. And we can say that this angle is equal to 180 degrees divided by number of teeth. Alright, because 
because we are dealing with the half of the two thickness, we should put 180 degrees. Okay, so... All right, so this line is actually the half of this tooth, right? So let's just create another line from this pitch point to somewhere here. And these two lines should be perpendicular, okay? And from our assumption, we should put an equal relation between these two lines. And notice that we have a fully defined sketch. And the last thing we need to close this sketch up by just converting these to circles and trimming unnecessary lines. Okay, so we're good to go. And then we can cut this sketch contour all the way through the object, right? And we can also put some fillet on these two edges. And for the value, we can say that it's equal to, well, 30% of 30% of the module, according to the standards. And then we can add a chamfer on both edges. And the value, again, should be equal to the module times, well, 0 0.3 or 30% of the module. And then we can easily pattern this, well, this feature along with this, uh, this fillet and the direction should be around this circle. And the number of instances should be equal to, uh, well, the number of teeth. So whenever we change the number of teeth value from the equation, this value changes automatically. Okay, so we can see that our, that our gear is finished, finally. So notice that we can actually do the same thing that I did in the, at, at the beginning of this video. I can just change the number of teeth from 30 to let's say 50. Okay, and, and let's see how it changes. How it's very easy to manipulate the size without having to worry about these dimensions and values. Alright, so I hope that was a pretty helpful video for you and good luck.